Hello and welcome to the University of Louisville's African American Theater Program's MLK Celebration. I'm Sydney Monroe Williams. I use they them pronouns. I'm also a professor in the theater department. I want to take this moment to acknowledge that we are on the indigenous lands of Shawnee, Cherokee, Chickasaw, and Osage tribal nations. Thank you for being here with us today, and let's get into our program. I have a dream. We will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. He chooses to leave his fears behind. No a million doubts bubbling in his mind. He's a master of debate, but he takes pride. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this virtual presentation. My name is Sydney Edwards, and I'm the director of the African American Theater Program here at the University of Louisville. And I'm Talid Hardy, a first year MFA student in the Theater Arts Department. We're so excited to welcome you to this year's virtual program. And I'm excited to have you, Salim, because I did this by myself last year. Well, I'm glad to be here. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so, we made the decision to do a virtual program again this year because we wanted to do our part in keeping everyone safe. Yes, it's good to know that we can still celebrate the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., even if we can't be together this year. Mm -hmm. So, today we have a great lineup for you, including a keynote address, mm -hmm. the presentation of our annual Lift Every Voice Award, and the winners of this year's MLK Day Artist Contest. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Sydney Monroe Williams. Sydney is an assistant professor in the theater arts department. They are a community-based theater artist whose work is situated at the intersections of race, gender, and class. Through creative strategies, Sydney facilitates art making and conversations with communities to spark dialogue, raise visibility, and celebrate marginalized bodies. Mm -hmm. Everyone, Sydney Monroe Williams. Hello and welcome to U of L's African American Theater Program's MLK Day. I am Sydney Monroe Williams. I use they them pronouns and I am an assistant professor in the U of L theater department. I'm also your keynote speaker today. Today's speech, I would like to focus on someone you might know and someone you might have forgotten about, but is very instrumental and key in the work I do. Uh, and the ways in which I live my life. Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin, some of you may know from 1963's infamous March on Washington, but also Bayard Rustin played a key figure and advisor to MLK. Bayard Rustin was also a homosexual in closed circles and later in his life became an advocate for LGBTQ rights. So why are we focusing on Bayard Rustin today? Well, I want to pose this question. Why would Bayard Rustin choose not to be open? What was preventing him from living an out life? And in what ways, how did being Black forefront other identity markers beyond maybe his queerness? Last year in social media, we saw a video of a young Black man being teased by his family and traumatized because of coming out. I think there's a connection between the work we need to do today and the work that was still prevalent back then as we advance as a community. To get a little bit more context on Bayard, we're going to segue to a video. August 28, 1963, a quarter of a million Americans gathered in Washington, demanding that Congress put an end to officially sanctioned racism. Uh, without Baird Rustin as the organizer, the march on Washington would have been like a bird without wings. It was a sea of humanity. He had the ability to pull people together 
He was able to reach out to hundreds and thousands of people all across America. Everybody from the NACP to the Protestant, Catholic, and Jews. He brought us all together. They live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. That afternoon, in the shadow of the Lincoln Memorial, a parade of speakers offered words of inspiration to the crowd. Those spoken by Martin Luther King would be heard over and over again for decades to come. Bayard Rustin's would be all but forgotten. Because of the stigma that attached to homosexuality, most Americans have no idea who he was and what he accomplished. So there's a way that Rustin is really a man without a history and in certain ways is a lost prophet of nonviolence. He was gay and we have not had the courage. We have not had what I call raw courage to honor a man because of his sexuality. Gays are beginning to realize what blacks learned long ago. Unless you are out here fighting for yourself, then nobody else will help you. I think the gay community has a moral obligation to continue the fight. Bayard Rustin. Hi, it's me, Sydney, again. As your keynote speaker today, I wanted to focus on a key figure of the civil rights movement, it being MLK and all. But this particular figure is someone who I look to um, as a young person um, and who made a significant impact on my life. And that is Bayard Rustin. The reason why Bayard is such an influential figure in my life is because until Bayard, I didn't know of a gay man that was out, so to speak, um, and had a life could be accepted in notable circles and could have a future. This revelation was instrumental in changing how I saw myself in the world and the work I do with populations like myself. Bayard Rustin was once quoted saying, Martin Luther King, with whom I worked very closely, became distressed when a number of the ministers working for him wanted to dismiss me from his staff because of my homosexuality. Last year, in 2021, we saw a young Black man being teased by his family for coming out and being gay. I didn't watch the video, and you can if you want, but I'm not into Black trauma. But what it did evoke for me was the fear I felt as a young Black boy growing up in Arkansas and not seeing myself really reflected around. Not only that, but also feeling like there weren't spaces where I felt safe, even amongst those that I thought cared the most for me. Thank you, Bayer Rustin, for being a role model, a leader, and being out. Building off Bayer's example, I wanna talk a little bit more about my work and the ways in which an example like Bayer influenced the work I do today. I would define myself as an applied theater artist. This means I use theater in non-traditional settings, in classrooms, in schools, uh, with individuals, with marginalized populations. And previously before coming to U of L, I worked in Boston at the Theater Offensive, where I oversaw LGBTQ youth programs for students and youth in the city ages 14 to 25. So it's really important for me to work with communities that look like myself and to give back to those communities. Being here in Louisville more recently, I was invited by Hannah Drake and Josh Miller to join the Unknown Project. The mission of the Unknown Project is to create experiences that tell the stories of Black men, women, and children who were enslaved in the Kentucky area and surrounding areas. Part of my work with the Unknown Project is the Floating Reconciliation Experience. This is an original play that will premiere on the Bell of Louisville in 2022. This play activates those histories and those stories. Part of this work involves engaging community throughout the aspect to just learn of those stories that maybe we don't know. But also through this work, 
how do we activate and in some ways implicate those that are not black in our struggle for liberation? As the artistic lead for unknown projects floating reconciliation, part of my responsibilities include creating an original immersive theater experience for patrons. And this show will premiere in June, 2022. In fact, in December of 2021, we just did a stage reading of the work and there are great things on their way. Stay tuned. But in thinking about Bayard Rustin and other individuals involved in civil rights and Black liberation, I wanted to think a little bit more about representation in this experience as well. Growing up, I never really heard or saw, and, and still to this day engage with many examples of LGBTQ persons within enslaved narratives. I know we were there, I know we existed, but what was that life like? How did they navigate it? And how we, might we use that template in better understanding ourselves today? In the Floating Reconciliation Experience, it features two characters of color that are queer, who are also seeking freedom. The layer of not only being Black, but also being queer and also female identifying as a heightened level of consciousness, as Du Bois would say, but also a threat for life, but also a dear pursuit for freedom and liberation. The Floating Reconciliation Experience is an opportunity to foster dialogue, create connection, and to learn about Kentucky's unknown and known enslaved history. Part of this work includes a container such as the Bell of Louisville, but also creating an immersive theater experience. This new show will invite audience members to board the bell and float down the Ohio River as they learn about Kentucky's unknown and known enslaved history while also engaging on a more deeper context about how to hold that past as we re-envision a new future. So I wanna to end today with a piece that was written by an ensemble of queer black men that I worked with in Austin, Texas, The Mahogany Project. This piece is entitled Dear Lost Little Black Boy, but I wanna open that up and expand it beyond gender and to all of those LGBTQ plus Black individuals that are navigating this world, and particularly young people. So I'm going to read this piece, and uh, thank you for being here for this keynote. Dear lost little Black boy, you are not a freak. You are not an experiment. You are not a deviant. You are not different. You are amazing. The terrible truth is there are people who will not like you. Matter of fact, they will hate you for who you are and won't even know you. And I apologize for what you will encounter. I apologize for the boys who will constantly call you a faggot every day when you're in school. I'm sorry for the future fights you will have trying to fend off everyone. They are lost. Lost little black boy, no, you are beautiful. Realize your value and that you are important and so many people love you. I hate that it takes you so long to really believe this, but it's true. This time it will get so much better and the licks you receive from classmates and family members will be replaced by love. And I wish I could show you that the constellation that will guide you through this time, but realize it only builds character. Lost little black boy, you are amazing. Never change because people will change because of you. Lost little black boy, you are here for a purpose and that's to transform lives. You will have the guts to do something most people can only dream of and that's to be out and proud. The struggle you go through will build the strength needed to be the voice of an entire generation. You will never know how many lives you may have saved doing that. Lost little black boy, never be afraid of your potential and realize the only difference between fear and courage is action. Never make yourself feel small to satisfy others. Lost little black boy, love hard. And even if some don't like it, others will love and appreciate you for it. Lost little black boy, follow your heart. 
chase your dreams and love. Love as if you've never been talked about, bullied, let down, harassed, beaten up, hurt, pained, raped, sexually abused, discriminated against, or taken advantage of. Lost little black boy, be the change you want to see in the world. Lost little black boy, never settle and keep your standards high and realize your bravery. Lost little black boy, I love you. I just wish you loved yourself. Sydney, thank you so much for being our keynote speaker today. We're so glad you could join us. Mm -hmm. Since we are virtual again this year, the AATP decided to continue to engage our community by doing the MLK Artist Contest again. Mm -hmm. We sponsored our very first MLK Artist Contest last year, and it was a big success. So once again, the AATP set out to find musicians, poets, visual artists, rappers, dancers, literally artists creating in all art forms. We asked them to create art inspired by the theme of this event. Martin Luther King's quote, hate cannot drive out love. Only love can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to say that so many people answered the call. And here are this year's honorable mentions, followed by a promotional clip of an upcoming AATP event. Drum major for justice, peace, and righteousness. Created by photographer Akram Burton, this photo composite incorporates layers of images taken at various times. Images include the Martin Luther King Memorial in Washington, D.C. in 2011, drummer playing the talking drum in Zaria, Nigeria in 1979, and drummers in the dance group the Art of Black Dance and Music in Boston, Massachusetts in the 1970s. These images were overlaid on a map of the world. This photograph was inspired by a sermon titled The Drum Major Instinct, delivered at Ebenezer Baptist Church by Martin Luther King Jr. on February 4, 1968 in Atlanta, Georgia. This piece was also inspired by the fact that drums play an important role in the physical, emotional, and spiritual life in Africa and the African diaspora. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice, say that I was a drum major for peace, I was a drum major for righteousness. You can't legislate your way to a better world. A more tolerant person doesn't just naturally occur. We exist in a time where the louder a person gets, the stronger the point that's being made. Information floods the senses, traveling at the speed of a click, a scroll, or swipe. Less concerned about understanding, we are consumed with being right, ignorance, be the infection spread at the rate of misinformation it causes us to do the opposite of what we're told easier to catch than a common cold some think avoidance be the key let's keep everything separate and we'll achieve the balance we need we name it social distancing but history causes segregation and if time has taught us anything is that separate but equal is not conducive to a unified nation it's hard to hear heritage not hate when most blacks have felt hate from that heritage and hate feels like the disease we've inherited. But love, love be the vaccine concocted by someone smarter than we could ever hope to be. And once injected, we won't know if it's effective until we've been tested. Love makes all things new and reconstructs what you thought you knew. It calls out falsehoods and delights in truth. There ain't a booster for this, just a choice to choose love every time instead of slipping into the benign. Its opposite isn't hate, 
It's apathy, the lack of caring until it happens to me. But it's happening to we. Folks saying they can't breathe, unable to find peace even in their sleep. Love doesn't mean you always have to agree with me. Love says, let's get you the help you need. Prioritizing others ahead of self. Doing what's best for others' health. But it's not self-neglect. Love says, after you're done helping others, then you're next. Love keeps on loving until there ain't a need left. Love doesn't wait for herd immunity. It doesn't take the lazy route and wait for someone else to do it for me. Love carries its own cross. And it knows that the wings of others doesn't mean it has to take a loss. Love sees the blind spots of others and says, I got you covered. Darkness can't hope to win when you've got love within, but how many of us are spreading it though? Hey, the storm clouds won't make the shadows dissipate. It takes the light of love to make the darkness fade. And deeds drafted from the darkest corners of the heart won't make evil depart. It takes something way beyond our rationale. Let's love our enemies. Let sympathy abound. And like a spoonful of sugar I heard, it helps the medicine go down. It was Mahalia Jackson's rendition of the hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, that inspired Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous I Have a Dream speech. Today, you will be shown a slideshow with my own rendition of the hymn. Here is Precious Lord, Take My Hand by yours truly, Avery Lee. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am In fall 2021, Squalis Puppeteers invited the University of Louisville's African American Theater Program to join them in imagining a collaboration that would increase access to puppetry skills in our black and brown neighborhoods. We met at the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage, better known as the Heritage Center, in West Louisville where we began a conversation that included members of Squalis, 
the African American Theater Program, the Heritage Center, and a few local black puppeteers. Excitement about a possible collaboration developed into a short-term plan to bring two of the Squalus puppets to the Heritage Center for the 2021 West Louisville Holiday Festival. to witness the excitement that day as community members eagerly took photos with the giant figures of Martin Luther King and our contemporary Shiro, Miss Maddie Jones. Those of us wearing and dancing with the puppets were besieged with questions about how one could learn more about puppetry. Since then, the collaboration has deepened and expanded to include the Justice League LOU, a coalition of youth performing groups who want to incorporate puppetry skills into their original productions. Going forward, the collaborators are developing a puppetry program that will be based at the Heritage Center. It will focus on sharing puppetry and storytelling skills with youth and adult community members through creating and performing with figures from Kentucky's African-American history. I love to see all the talent in our community. Me too. We've got some very, very precious artists here. Yes. So at this time, we would like to take a moment to honor a very special person. Each year, we award a local shining star with our Lift Every Voice Award. This award is presented to an individual whose creative work promotes positive social change. Here to present this year's Lift Every Voice Award is Lamar Hardy. My name is Lamar Hardy, and I'm a third year MFA graduate. This year, I'm pleased to present the AATP's Lift Every Voice Award to Ms. Elmer Lucille Allen. Elmer Lucille has been a pillar in our community for many years. She was born here in Louisville and graduated from Central High School. She made history when in 1966, she became the first African-American chemist at Brown Foreman in the Research and Development Laboratory. She then retired as a senior analytical chemist in 1997. Ms. Allen graduated from Louisville's Municipal College, a former college of the University of Louisville African Americans in 1951. Received a Bachelor of Science in General Education for Chemistry and Mathematics from Nazareth College in 1953, and as a Master of Arts and Creative Arts from the University of Louisville in 2002. Erma Lucille was also the president of Kentucky Coalition for Afro-American Arts Inc. for almost 10 years. She published two directories of African-American artists and arts organizations from across the Commonwealth of, of Kentucky and was responsible for hosting two arts conferences. Today, Ms. Allen can be found creating in the ceramic department here on campus and attending as many arts events as she can throughout the city. It is my pleasure to present the 2022 Live Every Voice Award to Ms. Elmer Lucille Allen. Oh, <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you for being with us this Martin Luther King Jr. Day. My name is Sydney Edwards and I'm the director of the African American Theater Program. And I have 
Naisha Martin. I'm a first year graduate student in the theater department. And we are so happy to have with us this year's Lift Every Voice Award recipient, Ms. Elmer Lucille Allen. Ms. Allen, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so very much. Yes, we're excited to do just a little bit of an interview with you so people can get to know you and you, you're such an important part of our community. Everybody needs to know who you are. Okay. <laughs> so um, we're just, we'll open it up. Maybe you want to ask the first question? Perfect. Well, I am brand new to Louisville, but I have heard that you are a prominent community member here in Louisville. So for those of us who might not be as familiar with you and your work in the community, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, first of all, I would like to say thank you all for honoring me. But most of all, I think that I'm important because I was the first African-American chemist in 1966, and I retired from there in 1997. And when you talk about a community leader, I don't think about myself as a community leader. I do the things that I enjoy doing. And so I'm in the community a lot. Uh, I'm an artist. I'm a, I graduated here from the University of Louisville in 2002 with a master's in ceramics and fiber. And But I've been a student at UML since 1981. And I'm still taking classes if you will. That's what a lot of people oh, don't know. Yeah. No, you'll see her Miss Allen know. in the halls, particularly in this building. You'll see her in the halls all yeah. the time. She's <laughs> right taking right classes. Right next to yeah. Right next to ceramics. Oh, I would have <laughs> class with you, Miss Allen. <laughs> I know, I'm a student. <laughs> <laughs> but but like, what about you say? Well, you talk about a community person. Well, I serve on, on like on the commission on public art okay. for Metro Louisville. Uh, I'm also, I have also been on the committee for, for Fund for the Arts, and I'm a member of the West River Women's Collaborative, which is a women's group in the West End. And I'm, in, I'm also an I'm Kappa Alpha woman. I've been there 70 years. All I've right. been 70 years. And uh, I formed the, in, in, in the early 80s, I formed the Kentucky Coalition for Afro American Arts. Mm -hmm. And during that period of time, we had two conferences. One here in Louisville and one in Lexington. And in addition, I created two directories of African American artists. One, the last one, I still have a copy of it. I feel like I have a copy of them after a year. But I just like being involved. And I really love going to opening to exhibitions where I, I like interacting with the artists. And I was out this morning at 9 o'clock, I was on a Zoom meeting, and I had attended this opening at the Kentucky Museum of Art and Craft, and it was a glass exhibition. And I did not realize that all the artists were African American until today. And it was really awarding. Uh, Joy Yates was the main curator, and Shay Rose, which who teaches glass here, was, was responsible for that exhibition being there. And what, when you sit down and think about what do I do, is that I'm, I'm just here. And I try to speak to everybody, you know, wherever I am. And I just like being involved in the public. And I think I have never, I, don't, I do not march. I've said I've never done. But I, but I stand for, like for Brianna Taylor. I really believe I, I stand for her. And uh, and a lot of the things that, I, that has happened here in the world, I stand behind Attica Scott. But you, but you cannot, you cannot be everywhere and everything. So I'm just me all the time. I love it. <laughs> oh, that was really great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Miss Allen, I think it's it's very interesting because I know that your early career, right, or you originally went to school for the sciences. So you have a bachelor of science in general education in chemistry and mathematics, and then you got your master's in 2002 in ceramics <laughs> yeah. and fiber. And I think it's what's interesting is you know so many people make the sciences and the arts very separate, but they're very one in your world. Yes. Yeah. In the 50s, when you got your first degree, I said, it says it's in education. So was your plan to teach, or did you have other aspirations well, as well? Let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back. Oh, yeah. When you think about, I, I was 90 years old, I was the 27th. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so you think about, in that period of time, I was born in 1931, and, and I did not go to school with a white person until I was a junior in college. I went to, when I graduated from Central High School in 1949, I could not come to University of Louisville. 
University of Louisville had a black school called Louisville Municipal College. And it was in existence from 1931 to 1951. And when, and when they closed Louisville Municipal College, I went to Nashville, which is now Spalding University. And they were the first school that integrated. And when you talk about the integration, there was a day law that stated that blacks and whites could not go to school together. And so that was why you was going to have a black school. And, but I could not afford to come to school here. And I worked my way through school. Neither my parents have a high school education. So I don't know what inspires me to keep going, but I did not have my black teachers at top. I had black teachers all the way through. And they were examples. When you think about coming to school, teachers were dressed every day. Their hair, they had their hair was always fixed. And they taught you all the things that I knew, I learned there. And I'm still saying, black teachers, our students need to see, our African American students need to have some black teachers as they go through the public school. And some of them do not have, have not had one African American teacher. But when I went to school, I, I, I wanted to be a scientist. And when I came out of uh, Nashville College, I could not get a job as a chemist anywhere. And so I took a civil service exam. And my first job was as a clerk typist. And what I tell everybody, what a job is better than no job. But the only thing that I could have done at that time was to be a school teacher yep. or to be a nurse yep. or work at the post office. Yep. Those were the three jobs that were available for African American. And so and so I lived in Indianapolis for five years. And then I came back here and I worked at Children's Hospital as a med tech. And then I worked as a research chemist at American Synthetic. And then I worked at uh, University of Louisville Medical and Dental Research for Dr. Phil Prater. And while I was there, I met a young lady that yeah, her uncle worked at Brown Point. And she wanted to know if I would make an application, if I would fill out an application. And that's how I got the job there. And so from there, it's just history. Yeah. 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 So I know you were the, the first chemist at Brown Forman, the first yeah. African American yeah. chemist. How long were you the only African American chemist? I over 15, 10 or 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's about 15 years. What was that like? Well, you know, as I am right now, mm -hmm. I come into the room, this is me. Mm -hmm. You accept me as I am. And you go home. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we all we all here, we all have a job. Yeah. Yeah, and we all have a degree, mm -hmm. and we all chemists, so we're going to get away. Okay. Yeah. And this one lady, her husband died, and I went to the wake, and she was so mm -hmm. I said, but you're my co-worker. So I went. So I think that you need to, maybe I have express self-control self of myself, and that I like to let people know that you mean something to me. If I know you, and something happens to you, I'm going to extend my, what I can do for you. And that's why I think people need to do Because uh, we talk about volunteering when the uh, Kentucky African American, Kentucky African American heritage are open. I volunteered there for four years. Wow. Yeah. So, I, yeah, four years. And then I ran the, I was a, a curator and director of Wayside Expressions Gallery from 2005 to 2017. So I told them I was a time. I don't, at the end of 2017, and they told me they didn't know we volunteered retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they can. But you know, but I've done a lot of things that you know, things that you don't realize that you, that you were doing. You know, that because volunteering takes a lot of time. But I just love, I just love, I love being with people, and I, I love, I love taking pictures, and uh, you know, it, it's just, it's just fun. But I do fiber, and we talk about my artwork. I do fiber and I do ceramics, mm -hmm. and I'm still doing ceramics. We're still doing fiber, and uh, and what is so exciting? Uh, this this today, this month, I'm going to, next month in January. I'm going to be in a big show my teapot in an exhibition in St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And this past year, I have been showing my fiber work in Lexington and in Georgetown, Kentucky. And, but anyway, but I just like doing work, and, 
and I do the Bible that I do, I do mainly is all by hand. Mm -hmm. I call it your boy. And I'll send it to you. Please do. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt. You, because I was going to do you, one to do one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I heard Reverse. teapots. So do you, <laughs> I collect them. Okay. I, I want a Miss Allen teapot. I <laughs> about seeing these gorgeous teapots. Yes. Well, well, well they, there's some in the kiosk. Okay. 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 That's the next stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like being involved. I like being involved with people, and I'm still involved. Still involved. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, and speaking again, like just of global and being a native, if you can name something specific about global that just brings you pride, what would it be? Well, you know, when you sit down and think about it, you might not know, but you might not even have been there. <laughs> What's in Blanche Library? Have you ever been there? Mm -hmm. It's the first African American library in the United States. Okay. And they attempt in Chestnut. And they okay. have a I'm the president of the Western Branch Library of the Port Association. Okay. I love it. Yeah. You know, so I mean you sit down and think about that's a tent in Chestnut. And a lot of people, they never even heard of it, they don't even get know what it did. But it's right there. And and the head librarian is an African American. Yeah. Natalie Woods. Okay. So for next stop. That's well. the next stop. After the team. After the team. <laughs> <laughs> so our theme for this year's MLK program is hate not drive out hate. Only love can do that. Um, so I guess my question would be, what is Dr. King's legacy meant to you? His legacy is love. Both of hate. And I, when I sit down and think about him, you know, all the things that he did to, you know, to promote love, and for him to be killed, it's, it's, it's just something. And like I was telling you, I love that there was a big uh, luncheon. A lady that traveled with him has written two books. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure you know, she, yeah. she, 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 she. But, but we have to, it's like the marches that we made in you know, uh, in Birmingham and the ones that we did in DC. Mm -hmm. And that you have, to, you have to stand, you have to stand for what you believe in. And that's what you do. Miss Allen, are there any um, last things that you would like us to know about you? I'll actually, I'll, 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 what I'll do is I'll present you this award and you can do your acceptance speech. How about that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, the African American Theater Program presents to Miss Elmer Lucille Allen this Lift Every Voice Award in recognition of her creative work that promotes positive social change. Thank I wish to thank them. The University of Louisville African American Theater Department for giving me this Martin Luther King Award this year. Thanks so very much. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Thank you, Ms. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you, Lamar, Niasia, and of course, thank you, Ms. Elmer Lucille Allen, for all you've done and continue to do for the Louisville community. And now, what you've all been waiting mm -hmm. for. It's time to announce the winners of our second MLK Day Artist Contest. The competition was tough this year, mm -hmm. but we were so grateful to receive so many wonderful submissions. And here they are, the winners of this year's MLK Day Artist Contest. <clears throat> Martin Luther King. Most think he just had a dream, but I think it was more of a plan or a plot you know, to get more than what we got, more than reparations, more representation, emancipation, proclamation. Let's change the conversation. One nation under God. Hold on, wait. We can't be praying the same because my God wouldn't treat you this way. Gabe, open up the gates. Don't hesitate. Amazing. But where's the grace? We fixed the plate, but everyone but us ate. It's okay. We'll smile and fight through the pain because one day little white girls and little black boys will play. I just wonder if they'll ever change the rules to the game. Peace. Lord, help me to hold out. Oh, if you help me. Lord, help me to hold out. Change has come. Stay tuned. Breaking news. This just in. 
Police are on the scene searching for a young, white, female who was last seen. An FBI task team has joined the search. National Guard is on standby. Here's a clue. We go missing too. Next clue. While it might seem to you our disappearance is driven by personal choice, conclusion reached without hearing us, no regard for our voice, even worse, you think your research, your numbers, your misinformation supports the younger we are, we're nothing more than runaways. Most likely, you say. We say, theory is flawed and sketchy at best. Question? By law, how old do we have to be to get your full attention, for you to look for, to find, to rescue me? Some of us are younger. But others of us are well of age. Turn the leaf, next page, new hypotheses. No longer classified as youth, instead thought of as low-hanging fruit. Cause of a hiccup, a speed bump in our past. By degree of importance, we come last. Speaking from a place in me of divinity, my past is not the totality of my identity. You can't label or judge what you cannot see or... When wrappings, trappings all fall away, full transparency, as you say, simply put, is our missing of no significance? My truth, lacking privilege, we create. No presence, not enough splash. You see over and over, we ponder, we wonder, trying to process this thing, make it make sense. Why are we a past tense before you barely begin? Your efforts abort, you fall short, adding our names to a growing page of just another day, another person of color, man, woman, child, gone, M-I-A. What is it about our lives? Conditions we're in, coupled with the color of our skin, my black or brown, that renders me unworthy of being a priority. Where is the needed urgency across this country? Starting with my own community. Media makes mention of us in a flash. Breaking news first day. Next day, a hashtag. An afterthought, buried before you know if the body is even cold, of course. This is soon we get airtime at all. Seems to me, in all reality, whether headlines, bylines, or no lines at all, makes no difference when marginalized or indigenous. Color blocked by the melanin are missing equates to invisible. When will enough be enough? You say limited resources are there to track. I know only my people, my folk, have my back. Faith fuels. Hope carries a laid out course. Sure determination, a driving force. Raising monies, awareness, by any means necessary. Taken to the street, screaming help to anybody they meet. Beating the bush down dark places against the hush. Sounds of silent roars behind the closed blue door. Been told there's nothing else to do, wait and see. Something might break in a day or two, a few weeks or so. In the meanwhile, you chase the next headlines like butterflies, while my folk keep doing what they do, first down on their knees, then lifted up by fire, shut up in them bones, they press on. Social media engaged, Instagram, tweeting, texting, and spaces and places where know-how and means coexist. Posting and passing out flyers, hanging trees used for our good, cause the devil is a liar. Holding prayer watches by day, we pray, Father, demons that devour, keep them at bay. Candlelight vigils by night, fill this void, this gap with light, cause that's where ghosts haunt, in the natural order of things. Our lives were never intended to just dissipate like so much mist from morning dew rising till it burns off by sunrise. Expected or accepted in the natural order of things. In the midst of the pointless chatter, hear this. We will not bow down to racism. We will not bow down to injustice.
We will not bow down to exploitation. What you going to do? What you going to do? I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. Whether trapped and trafficked. Brutalized and murdered. Kidnapped and held captive. Whatever. Whenever. Wherever. Collectively, for all of us. All that really matters. Is for you to keep the truth lifted. Keep us in plain view. No less than 100% equal effort will do. Cause we are somebody. Our lives matter. And we go missing too. We gon' stand. We gon' stand. incredible talent. Again, thank you to all of our contest participants. Yes, and thank you again to Sydney Monroe Williams, my AATP assistants to Lee Hardy, Naeja Martin, and Lamar Hardy, and to the Theater Arts Department and our Chair Nefertiti Burton. 
Be on the lookout for more AATP events, including this year's Black History Month Scholarship Fundraiser. We are raising money to assist promising students who are pursuing a graduate certificate in African American theater through the AATP here at UofL. Yes. Thank you all for joining us for our virtual Martin Luther King Day celebration today. Please share this video with your family, friends, and professional networks. And as always, we ask that you take the time to follow us on social media with our handle at, at official U of L A A T P. Everyone, have a great Martin Luther King Jr. Day. tall like a steeple this is just a shout out to my people and if you need a cause here's a reason oh yeah yeah you know it's do or die for my people